Hey guys, in this guide, we're going to be looking at NoSQL databases. So uh, uh, a lot of you guys that have been following me know that I like to take complex topics and, and try to break them down so that anyone can understand them. All right, so we're going to start from scratch. So if you know absolutely nothing about NoSQL, then you're in the right place. Uh, we're not going to stick with any specific database. MongoDB is probably the most popular, uh, but I mean, we'll talk about Mongo, but there's other there's many other database systems and even other types of NoSQL databases available. All right. So one common misconception with uh, with NoSQL is people. Some people think that it actually stands for no SQL, like it, it's not possible when really it stands for not only SQL, because it is quite possible to use SQL on some of these these databases. Um, it's not you know, it's not extremely common, but it is possible. So in my opinion, I think a better word to describe it uh, is a non-relational database. All right, because, you know, we have Oracle, we have MySQL, Postgres. These are all relational databases. They have tables and columns and so on. Well, NoSQL databases do not. OK, they don't use tables uh, or columns or the tr tr traditional aspects of a relational database. OK, um, NoSQL databases are known for working well with big data which I'll talk about in a second, as well as uh, real time web applications. OK, so these these are some places where you're going to find NoSQL databases. There's also multiple types. OK, we have document databases like MongoDB. We have column databases, key value stores and so on. And I'm going to get into the specific types in a little bit. All right, so uh, big data is a, a term that's thrown around pretty often. You've probably heard it. Um, what this is, it, it describes data sets that are, uh, they've become so large that traditional methods of storage and processing are starting to be become inadequate. All right, there's been uh, a massive increase in data volume within the last decade or so. Uh, and this is mostly due to, you know, huge social networks like Facebook, Twitter, search engines like Google, and other websites and applications that store a ton of data. If you think of, you know, every Facebook profile, every post in everyone's feed, that's all stored somewhere. And that's just a huge amount of data. And some of the challenges with this, with this data is storing it, capturing it, analyzing it and transferring it. All right. So so this is where NoSQL comes in. Now, please don't think that anything that I say in this video is, uh, you know, please don't think I'm saying relational databases are dead. NoSQL is going to take over the entire industry. Anyone that says that has absolutely no clue what they're talking about, or they're just trying to sell you something, some kind of NoSQL service. There's a lot of situations and a lot of applications where a relational database is the obvious tool. NoSQL and relational databases kind of like a hammer and an ax. They're both going to be useful. They're always going to be useful. They just have, you know, certain purposes. You're not going to use an ax to, to bang in a nail. You're not going to use a hammer to chop down a tree, um, but they're both necessary. All right. And we're also going to talk about the advantages of relational databases. So we've already uh, discussed big data and how, you know, that's a huge ben benefit of NoSQL is that it handles a lot of data and it does it very quickly. Another huge advantage is data. It's data model, which is extremely flexible. All right. So if we look at relational databases like, let's say, MySQL or Postgres, um, we have to go in and structure the data in a predefined schema. You guys that have worked with SQL know that you have to go in and create the database. Um, you have to model everything that you need, the tables, the, the fields, the constraints, even the data type of each field. All right. So is it a varchar? Is it text an integer and so on? And this is all stuff that you have to do when you're working with relational databases. Yes, you can find tools that can make it a little easier, but at its core, at its core level, this has to be done in the data layer. This brings us to the next advantage, which is the data structure. Not only do you not have to define your tables and columns. Uh, well, there is no tables and columns, but you don't have to define anything like that. You don't even have to know your data structure. Now, unless it's going to be a completely dynamic data model, you should at least plan out and have an idea of how your data is going to look and then handle that on the application layer. 
okay there's a lot of different tools there's object relational mappers that we can use to actually create a schema on the application layer all right so hopefully that makes sense NoSQL databases are in many cases much cheaper than uh, to manage than relational databases there is you know there's less of a need for uh, multiple system admins because there's not there's not as much to do okay there's not as much to manage so that's going to be cheaper also scaling scaling is a huge advantage of NoSQL it uses something called horizontal scaling or scaling out versus a, a relational database which uses vertical scaling or scaling up and I'm gonna go over what this means uh, in a second but scaling is, is extremely important in this industry because it's always growing successful websites and applications are always gonna gain more users and more data uh, Facebook is never gonna really lessen their their data load unless they they get rid of critical parts of their interface and their functionality so scaling is definitely key when you're working with lots of data. All right, so let's take a look at uh, an image here that kind of shows you scaling up versus scaling out. All right, now this image on the right here, scaling out, is also known as horizontal scaling. And this is what NoSQL databases do. And then over here is an example of scaling up or vertical scaling. And I know it says scale in, but uh, this image is close enough to explain what I'm talking about. So let's start with scaling up, okay, which is relational databases. So this means that in order to scale and, uh, you know, build up our system, we need to add components. So we need to add storage, um, you know, drives, memory, CPU power, network ports, and other resources that are very, very expensive. Um, so it's easy to see that, that there are some hard limits just by looking at this because obviously you can only put so much into this one box you can replace it with a bigger box and a bigger system but you're talking about huge amounts of money and huge amounts of time so the huge downside to this method is limitation and cost now scaling out or scaling horizontally which is what most NoSQL systems do uh, this means that you can use much cheaper commodity hardware and you can simply add additional nodes, uh, expanding your disk size, your, mem your memory, and so on. All right, and a group of nodes like this is called a, a cluster, which you may have heard before. Um, once you reach the limitations of, of your cluster, of your nodes, you can simply add another one, and for a fraction of the cost of, of you know, if you were scaling up and you were adding these expensive components, uh, or even worse, if you you were to the max and you, and you needed to still scale up, you'd have to, uh, you know, you, ha you need a whole new infrastructure, um, which can be a huge pain in the ass. So no SQL, uh, you know, scaling is definitely one of the advantages. All right, so now let's talk about relational databases and what they have over no SQL databases. So you don't have to know much about any of this to guess that relational databases are great for relational data. You have a schema where you always know what columns exist for a certain row. You know that a user can have a blog post. You know exactly how these two tables are related. Even though being schemaless is looked at as a plus in many cases, having a set schema also allows you to better understand the structure and the relation of the data stored. All right, it takes more maintenance and so on, but it is safer. Um, in many cases where data is closely related, this type of database is actually the better choice. Okay, relational databases also use something called normalization, which organizes data in a way that eliminates redundancy. Um, so all the data is, is stored in one place. Normalization is really important because it allows a database to take up as little space as possible, um, which also results in better performance. Now, there's all types of normalization. There's 1NF, 2NF, and it gets really complicated. Um, I'm not going to get into that, though. That's a whole other video on its own. Relational databases also use SQL, or Structured Query Language, which is an old technology, but very solid um, and, and, in my opinion, very easy to learn. Most SQL or relational databases also allow you to enforce data integrity rules using foreign constraints. So to give you an example, let's say that we had an author's table and a blog post table. 
and we had an author that created a post. Well, we can create a constraint so that we wouldn't be able to delete a user that had written a post because if we did that, uh, we would have a post with no author, okay, or no user. We don't really have these constraints available at the data level in NoSQL. So the last advantage here is that a lot of relational databases are ACID compliant. So this is, uh, it's an acronym, it stands for Atomicity, uh, Consistency, Isolation, and Durability. And this is a kind of a complex topic, so I'm not going to go into depth, but the gist of it is that it's an all or nothing rule. So when we make database transactions, for example, a bank account transfer, let's say from one account to the other, we have a series of actions for that. So we have to do multiple queries. We have to take money out of one account and then we have to put it into another. We have to do some math and tallying and so on. Well, most relational databases can use ACID compliance to say we're either going to do all of all of the actions or none of them. Because uh, could you imagine transferring money to, you know, from one account to another and only the money gets taken out from the first account? and then something goes wrong it crashes and it never goes into the other account so that would cause mass havoc so this is something that's very important um, now this isn't to say that we can't do that with NoSQL because we can it's just not built into the core system at the level that relational it is with relational databases alright so hopefully that makes sense now uh, now that we looked at the advantages and disadvantages of both relational and NoSQL. Let's talk about the different types of NoSQL databases. All right, um, now there's actually more than this, but these are by far the most common. So first we have document databases and uh, the most popular document database or, or NoSQL database in general is MongoDB. I have a crash course on MongoDB, which I would strongly recommend watching after this video if you haven't already. Um, document databases store data similar to JSON or, or JavaScript object notation where we have curly braces inside that we have key value pairs um, they can hold strings numbers arrays embedded objects and so on now on the database level they're completely schemaless so your application can be very dynamic if you wanted to have let's say users be able to add custom fields to their profile a document database is definitely the way to go. Uh, one profile may have an address, one may not. Some may have bios or contact info, some not. Um, so with relational databases, we would have to, uh, we'd have to strictly define everything from the table to the fields and so on. So this would not be ideal um, for something like that with dynamic data. So we also have column databases, which is optimized for reading and writing data in columns instead of rows. An example of this would be Apache Cassandra. This is a great, uh, this is great for things like analytics, and uh, it reduces the overall disk I/O requirements and the amount of data that needs to be loaded from the disk. Okay, so it can be uh, quite optimized. Then we have key value stores, which is the simplest type of NoSQL database. You have a key and a value. Um, this is optimal for huge data sets with very simple data. It's extremely fast, but not very intricate and customizable. Um, and it's, it's similar to an associative array or a hash. All right, now we also have cache systems like Redis, which is also a key value store, but can also be used as a cache system for temporary values. Um, Redis can be used as a database uh, and actually write data to the disk or can uh, just store data in cache. All right, I have a crash course on Redis on my channel if you want to learn more about that. So next we have graph databases, which aren't that common, but I think they're very interesting. I actually did a course on uh, Neo4j, which is the most popular type of, uh, or the most popular graph database. Everything in a graph database is looked at as a node, and they can have relationships with other nodes through what's called an edge. All right, so if you have some extra time, I would definitely suggest checking it out, um, looking at Neo4j, because it's really interesting. And uh, yeah, these are, these are used for huge data sets like social networks, where everything is related. All right, so before we go, I just want to give you a visualization of uh, a relation, relational database on the left with columns and rows 
Uh, and then uh, on the right, we have a document database, which has a very similar structure to JSON. All right, now the relational database, these all have to be set. You have to know what tables you have, what columns and so on. Um, with a document database, you have data stored in uh, kind of like JSON objects, and these don't have to be defined, okay? You can just define these as you go in your application, and that's what makes it very flexible, all right, and very dynamic. So that's going to be it, guys. Uh, hopefully you were able to soak up some of the information, and I explained it, I explained it well enough. And um, if you like this, please leave it a like. Please subscribe. Uh, whatever you can do is fine, and thanks for watching.